Hello everybody, praise be to God, and welcome back to The Legend of Zelda 2 Adventure of Link. So, last time we did a lot of stuff. We beat the fourth dungeon, we got another heart container, we maxed out our attack power, as well as getting a life level up and completing most of Dungeon 5. Now, this episode, we are actually not going back to Dungeon 5, at least if we do, it's not going to be right away. We got the whistle in the fifth dungeon, which will let us reach the final hemisphere of the game. And there's a lot of stuff there to get, so we're going to get that first, and that'll make the rest of the fifth dungeon relatively simple. Ouch. Ouch. Alright. Okay, get- come on. Come off it. Oh, expert duck! So if we go down here, there's this weird spider. If we hit the attack button, he'll move out of the way. And now we get to go on this winding path where a bunch of Lizalfoses will throw rocks at us. Oh, wow. It's really, really hard to do the downstab on the Lizalfoses. Like, believe me, mo like 90% of their head is invincible. So get used to making this trek, because holy cow, you're going to be making it quite a few times. I can already tell you that. <laughs> What you want to do is occasionally move to the left, which will throw off their aiming a bit. Alright, this is the last one. Wow, I did the, the downstab on them again. Like, I think it's just their shield hitbox is, like, ridiculously massive. It covers most of their head. Do not walk on those graves, because that deal... Uh, <laughs> then you'll have to fight a bunch of terrifying enemies. Instead, we're going across this bridge. Oh, great. Broken bridge with fish bones. Oh, that was a jerk move. That was a jerk move. Alright. There's a town over there. We want to go to there. Get away. Get away from me. Nope. Nope. No, no, no. Nope. 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 Just keep, basically just keep running unless you're in genuine danger. Well, this seems off. Ow, what the heck? Kasuto, strange. They're still damaging me when I'm reading the sign. That's a low blow. Ow, what's even hitting me? This is a weird place. It's deserted. Is there a magic guy down here? Hey, dude. The town is dead. Look east in woods. So he doesn't even teach you a magic spell. He literally just says this town has been destroyed. There's a new town that we need to find now. So you're wondering what the heck is up with this town? Yeah, it's dead, and there are invisible enemies that hit you. That's fair. And we still haven't reached the truly unfair part of the game yet. That's right, we've dealt with invisible walls. That's not the unfair part of the game. Alright. Well, if we wander this shoreline... We get the last heart container! Yay! So we've got a lot of life now. Small enemies here include a Lizalfos? Yeah, that's a small enemy if I've ever seen one. Yeah, you can see that the head stab on them doesn't really work all that well. There we go. That was 150 experience points apiece. So I actually got 300 experience points for that. So this is a very deadly trek to make. Even with my... My life's almost maxed out, by the way, so... I'm not getting much more defense than this. Oh, wow. <laughs> I got lucky killing that Lizalfos. Lizalfoses don't let their looks fool you. They are basically... Iron Knuckles. But you can headstab them, but it's hard. They're basically Iron Knuckles meet Gorax. 
We've got the shield of the Iron Knuckle and basically the attack of, of Gorak. So this is the stupidest fiend in the game. If you use ha the hammer on that very specific forest, you will find the hidden town. And there is nothing in the game to even indicate that the hammer can destroy forests, let alone that there's a town here in this exact one. Hidden town of Kasuto. Please save our town. Well, from what? We had to flee Kasuto. Hey, old lady, you walked out of the house. That means you've got a magic spell, right? You deserve my help. Follow me. Thank you. But trust me, if you can find that town without using a walkthrough, yeah, you deserve the help. There is a secret at Edge of Town. Thank you for telling me that. That's actually incredibly useful advice. And we get the magic jar. So now we have the maximum amount of magic and life in terms of bars. We still need free level ups from each of those, and keep in mind, two of those level ups will come naturally from just beating the last two dungeons. Nothing in here, okay. The old man who remains has magic. So if we go back to old Kasuto now, then, uh, and talk to that old man who told us that the town was dead, he'll actually give us the final magic, uh, one of the last magic spells of the game. I cannot help you. Well, there is a magic spell here. Let's look around, shall we? Looks like I can get in the fireplace. <laughs> There's a hidden door in the fireplace. Isn't that amazing? Remember the magic word. It's please. <laughs> and we get spell. The spell spell. This is probably the most worthless spell in the entire game. All it does is basically turn enemies into bots, except then the enemies give you less experience for doing so. And it doesn't turn all enemies into bots. There is literally one thing it's used for in this entire game. I will show you what that is now. The old lady said, oh, there's a secret at the edge of the town. Yep, if we use the spell spell here... It'll randomly summon a giant shrine. And we get the magic key! We can now no longer need keys. We can literally open any lock in any dungeon now. And that's why I wanted to come over here before going back to the fifth dungeon, so that way I wouldn't have to backtrack all the way to, like, just to get that one key we were about to get. Because I believe it was literally, like, one screen away when I died. Alright, well now we're gonna go back to old Kasuto and get the final magic spell, which is also pretty bad. But you do need it to beat the game. Alright, Lizalfos. Thank you. Because of his club, which pierces his shield, I do not want to deal with him in close quarters. Orange Lizalfos, on the other hand, I don't mind as much dealing in close quarters. Did he, does he give the same amount of experience points as the red one? If that's the case, why would I ever need to use the red one? Oh, well. Might as well use everything. <laughs> and our fireballs now kill those guys in one hit. Take that, Tech Tight! Alright, a big enemy in the forest. Spiders and harder versions of the Lizalfoses. Okay. Ooh, hidden cave. Actually, no, there's nothing good in there. At least not that we need yet. Oh, wow, this is... This is an interesting array of enemies. Oh, shoot, not the fishbone bridge again. I should have just cut through the forests. Ouch. No! 
Ugh. That is the worst. An enemy that comes flying at you, and you have nothing. There was literally nothing I possibly could have done to not die there. It was literally just, oh, you got unlucky with the enemy spawn. You deserve to die. Because that's, that's what the game basically feels. face. Alright, let's get out of here as fast as we can. Old man, this better be worth it. I can give you most powerful magic. And we get the Thunder Spell. This is... <laughs> Compare the amount of magic that costs to use with any other magic spell. Yeah. Basically what that does is it heavily damages all enemies on screen, but it is not worth it. But there is one part of the game where we absolutely need to use it, so... Whatever. Guide Dane it at the finest. Darn it. If you can uh, move on to a special uh, tile on the map, like something like this, but you also, at the same time that you walk onto that tile, encounter an enemy, instead of going to the special tile, you'll just go to the regular enemy encounter, but you'll still be on the square. So you can actually cut down on a lot of tedious stuff like that. This is such an imaginative screen, though, with Lizalthos is chucking stuff at you from behind a wall. It's very different from anything else in the game. Cool, we need 2,000 experience in order to get the next level up. That should hopefully be enough. Uh, there should hopefully be enough experience in the dungeon before the boss for us to reach that. Oh, this might actually show the cap on the amount of magic the lady... Nope, never mind. The lady actually doesn't just keep refilling it until it gets full. There, it's, it's actually like, I think the lady refills like 20 bars of magic or something. So if you keep casting magic spells while it's filling up, then it will actually run out and you'll have to visit her again, which is kind of funny. Back to the Ocean Palace. I don't think I mentioned it yet. Yeah, dungeon number five is the Ocean Palace. Chartered waters now. <laughs> my goal is to get enough <laughs> experience points to level up my magic before fighting the boss. Alright, so this Wookiee's a bit tricky, because it's hard to get an opening, because you also need to jump up to where he is. So we'll just take the hit, I guess. Oh, well, we'll need the jump spell. Aha! Don't know why I sounded Severn there. It's just something that happens. Oh, wait. Actually, no, wait. We have been over here before, haven't we?
Yeah, we're going up, though, this time, not down. Hi. Thank you, Magic Key, for letting me do stuff like this. Wow! I didn't even need to do the jump through him trick. Level 7 magic, yes, please. Link's sword is now just, like, made of hot iron. Alright, I'm gonna equip shield. This guy's tough, this is Gorn. He is incredibly powerful. So basically, in between his mace swings, just run forward and stab him. You cannot do the down stab on him because of his spiked helmet. Like, when I say he's powerful, I mean he can knock out a few bars of my HP, even with shield and my life at this level. Yep. One bar of HP per attack. With shield and level 7 life. Thankfully, if you're powerful, he's not too bad. You just need to be ready for him. And that is Dungeon 5. Thank you, Magic Key. And now we get the final life level up. So now we have one level up left to get in the entire game, and that is magic at 6,000 points, and we will guaranteed get that at the end of the 6th dungeon. And speaking of the 6th dungeon, we need to start heading there now. I forgot you could just run across the water there. That, that was dumb of me to not know that. So that's what the spell spell does. It actually turned even the Resolphuses up there into bots. I guess that's kind of useful. It's at least cheap. It only takes up one bar of HP, I think, at, or of uh, magic at this point. Carefully wander around the graves. Mm, yeah, we'll brave the Fishbone Bridge. So, the sixth palace is pretty well hidden, and you actually do need the whistle to find it. I forgot about that. So you see these rocks? If we stand in the middle and use the whistle, the palace appears here. Welcome to Palace 6, the hidden palace. Now I'm just going to say this right now. I'm going to die. Very quickly, I'm quite sure, because Palace 6 is utterly ridiculous. And I'm going to pull up the map right now, because it is an incredibly confusing palace at that. Alright, so we'll start by going down. Hey, there's pea bags everywhere, and honestly, at this point, it doesn't really matter if you get pea bags or not, because I'm going to reach final level in this dungeon regardless. But we're going to head this way. And the magic key is going to help you in this dungeon. It'll minimize the amount of keys you need to collect. So there is a pea bag down there if you so choose. Oh, and that's the only thing in this room. Lovely. Actually, I just realized there are no keys in this dungeon. Meaning if there are locked doors, you actually need to find the magic key. I'm looking at the map and I don't see any key icons anywhere. Alright, well we're going to start by trying to get the dungeon item, because that is the thing we want to get. And it's actually the only dungeon item in the game that's not required. Like, you don't need to get it, but... Dane, it sure will help if you do. Actually, it won't even help all that much, but it, it'll help for the final stretch of the game. Hi, Wizrobes are back. Those guys only take... Ow, oh, ow, oh, forgot there was a boomerang mace. Yeah. 
Yeah, you go off that cliff. Alright. Don't use the ferry to get across, because I believe there are blocks up ahead we need to destroy. Or maybe you could use the ferry, I don't know. But you don't want to fall down there, basically. Oh, that's right. There's also several um, surprises in this dungeon. Very unpleasant surprises at that. Hey, you. You give magic? No, you don't. You just try to attack me. That's rude. So literally just keep going in a straight line this way and you'll eventually reach the dungeon item. I'm just glad my wife is maxed out at this point. Oh, but come on. Come on. This is... You can make this jump. It is possible. It's just incredibly difficult. But you don't need the jump spell. Oh! Oh! oh I almost fell off. That would have been hilariously embarrassing if I did. But yeah, at this point in the game, you... I've pretty much said everything you need to know on how to survive, so... Just use your intuition. Oh, shoot! Forgot about the Yeah, that's evil. Invisible floors. So now, if you want the dungeon item, you have to go all the way back up. That's fair. Sarcasm. Oh, and just so you know, we haven't even come close to seeing the most annoying enemies in the game yet. They've saved all of those specifically for the final dungeon. Hey! I... Ouch. I'm still alive. Somehow. Thankfully, there's the elevator right here. But we have to make that- oh wow, I made that tricky jump pretty quickly, actually. Alright. Now it's the part of the show where I have to remember where I fell. Okay. Oh, duh, gone it. Still have one life. If I can even just get the dungeon item, which I do want to get before having a game over, that would be lovely. These guys are just going to be annoying, so I might as well kill them, so if I fall down again, I won't have to deal with them anymore. <laughs> Alright, apparently they're like, oh no, he has the reflex spell, our one weakness. Let's move away from him. come a far away from the first dungeon where we're like, wow, that guy gives 20 experience. That's amazing. Alright. So it's shortly after this that I gotta jump. Okay. We're gonna need the jump spell. That's the room where it's like, oh, you, if you want a fairy over that? <laughs> nope. There's a bunch of blocks at the end of the room you have to destroy, so if you use the fairy spell, you have to go backwards. I remember hyping up the fairy spell as being amazing, and I haven't really shown it off. That's because I don't use it to cheat and get through keyholes without getting keys. If you're a speedrunner, though, that's, like, the best spell. Alright, so it's after the third one. Yep, alright. I had to jump over a giant invisible gap, but I did it. No, okay, no invisible gaps in this room. Oh no, are you serious? 
Okay, well, equip the life and uh, shield. Because guess what? Mini boss. We have to fight the Riding Blue Iron Knuckle again. Thankfully, we've got max attack power and life now, so he should be much less annoying. Thanks for the key that I don't need. And that's the final dungeon item of the game, the cross. This lets us see invisible enemies. So like the invisible enemies in Old Kasuto, we can see them now. Of course, at this point, why would we ever go back to Old Kasuto? That's a fairly big invisible gap. Oh boy. Oh boy, but get out of my way. So now we actually get to reach the boss, and... Of course, the boss is quite a far away. The boss is also, I would say, one of the most legitimately difficult bosses in the game. Like, there's not a whole lot of cheapness to it, except for there are bottomless pits with lava. But if it weren't for that, it would have been an actually amazing boss fight. <laughs> oh, like a pro. Well, since I have to go back to the beginning of the dungeon anyways, I might as well just keep grinding on ma uh, red magic jars there. Ouch! Get out of my way. That, that's experience central there, because that's four wizard robes and they each give a hundred experience. It's four hundred experience. Out of my way. Oh, you? Get out of here. Ho 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 ho. Far too active. Yeah, I might as well just go here and keep hitting this thing until it gives me a red jar. Oh no! This is one of those dungeons where it doesn't give you a red jar. It doesn't drop anything. Oh shoot! That's not good. Well, I'm pretty much screwed. I'm not going down without a fight, but I, I see pretty much no way that I'll ever be able to get to the boss and beat it with one life and only that much magic and life. Invisible gap down here. Invisible gap down here. And we need to go this way. Oh, that's right. This... Oh yeah, I physically can't even reach the boss unless I get enough magic to be able to use the fairy spell. because Reflect takes a, quite a bit of magic to use. So if you're out of magic, you can't even kill the Wizards. And they just love appearing right in front of you. Okay. Oh! I also, um... Okay. I also need a fairy to get through here. Oh, well. Ho, 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 ho. That's all the time we have for this episode of Legend of Zelda 2 Adventure of Link. Thanks for watching. I'm Colorful Artie. If you tune in next time, we will complete the Hidden Palace. And... Actually, if that's the only thing we have left to do, it'll probably be a pretty short episode. Hope to see you then. Have a great day, and God bless.